Right, so what can we do with this? Well, what I'm gonna start with is by having a look at what I know from the negation I'm assuming to be true. So I'm gonna say, assume negation is true. Uh, and I can see there are numerous facts that I can pull on, right? For example, I can say, well, k is of this, uh, k is of this form, 4n minus 1. Um, I can say k is composite. And um, I can also talk about these other pieces of information, like the known prime factors of this. These are like the, the building blocks of my proof because these are the characteristics that are particular to this question. So I'm going to have to use them in some way, right? So uh, let's, start with, uh, let's start with this one. So it's, if it's of the form 4n minus 1, then for some value of n, I can write k in this way. So I'm going to say, let k equal, uh, what letters have I got? I've used, um, I've used p's and q's a couple times, I've used a's and b's. Let's go with, um, let's go with s and t. So I'm going to say uh, 4s minus 1 is going to be my form here. And I need to say s is not just any number. S is going to be one of these. Uh, it's just like n, so it has to be a positive integer, okay? Now, because I'm writing it in this form, if you think about what we've established, this is part C, right? Because if you think about what I've established in part A and B, um, I know that because I'm in this form, I have to be an odd number, right? Because all odd numbers are captured within these two sequences that I had before. So I can say, well, if I'm in this form, then part A implies for me that k is odd. Now you might think, well, what's the big deal with that? Um, what can I do with that fact? Well, if it's an odd number, then I can say not only is it odd, but it's composite, and there have to be only odd factors. As soon as you have a single even factor, then your resulting number, the product, is also going to be even because one of the factors will be two. So therefore I can say, part A tells me that k is odd, but I also can say that it's odd and composite. So I can say that k being composite, if I put these two facts together, I say facts, these two assumptions together, that k is odd and that k is composite, uh, that means that k is, or it can be written as, is a better way to say that, can be written as the product of two odd numbers. Remember, no even numbers can squeeze into this because as soon as you have a single even factor, the whole number ends up being even. Okay, but hold on a second. Um, k can be written as the product of two odd numbers. So I've so far used the fact that k is composite. I've also used this fact, or I keep on saying fact, because I'm so used to proving things based on true uh, reality. Based on these assumptions, the k is composite, and the assumption of the um, form 4n minus 1, what I haven't used is this assumption down here, that none of the factors are of the form 4n minus 1. So how do I use that? Well, if they're not of the form 4n minus 1, because the factors have to be odd, they have to be the other kind of fa um, format, right? Um, we saw in part A, if you've got an odd number, you can either write it as 4n minus 1, or you can write it as 4n plus 1. These are the only odd numbers that we have to work with. But according to this assumption, um, we know that none of the factors can be of this form over here, 4n minus 1. So we can eliminate this, right? That's according to our assumption. So now what I can say is, uh, I'm going to sort of write down that logic that I just mentioned, right? None of k's factors are of the form 4n minus 1. That was just what we we're excluding, right? Because that is what the assumption, which we know to be false, uh, actually says to us. So none of k's factors are of the form 4n minus 1. And this implies that the factors all have to be 4n plus 1, right? So I'm not going to have enough space there, so I'm going to write it down here on the next line. I can say the factors, or k's factors, k's factors must be of the form 4n plus 1. Okay. Now, this is really good because now I'm starting to not just use part A, which you can see just here, but now I actually can invoke part B. What does part B have to do with any of this, right? Let's go back to it. Um, it was, you know, prove that the product of any two positive integers of the form 4n plus 1 
where n's a positive integer, that's exactly the situation I have here. I'm saying that k has to be the product of two odd numbers. What kind of odd number? It's this kind of odd number because I'm excluding this other kind of odd number. I can assume that therefore it has to be of the form 4n plus one, right? Because it's the multiple, or sorry, the product of two 4n plus one type odds, right? So therefore I can say, hold on, if uh, if k's factors must be of the form 4n plus 1, then that implies that k itself must also be of the form 4n plus 1. So um, I guess, in fact, I could write this as a different thing. I could say this is from part b, right? Part b tells me that k itself is, and I'm going to be a bit lazy here and just grab this. Okay, so I hope you're following so far. This is how I'm bringing all the pieces slowly together. How would I say this, right? Well, if you remember um, how I did this earlier, if I'm saying that k is a composite number of this form, 4n minus 1, I just have to pick a particular n, like s, right? Well, I mentioned before, I'll, I can just use the next letter after this, because that's why I chose s, because the next letter um, is, is available, it's unused at the moment. So I can say, therefore, I can not just let k, uh, you know, look like this, I can let k look like this, 4t plus 1, because I'm matching this form that you can see over here, and I just need to say, you know, t is one of these positive integer things. Okay, but hold on a second, and maybe you're starting to see why this is going to cause an issue and how we're going to make the proof actually work. Stick with orange here. I've got this statement up here about what k is. That was from my assumption, that was 4s minus 1. I worked through the assumption and also what I had in part A and part B, and I determined that I could also write k in this format over here. So the same number, uh, apparently I can write in two different forms. Okay, let's see what that leads to. I can say, uh, let's talk about these two equations, let's give them names. So I'm going to call this one equation 1, and this one equation 2. So I can say, equating these two equations, one and two, what do I get out of that? Well, I'm gonna have on the left-hand side, equation one, and on the right-hand side, equation two, or the right-hand sides of both equation one and two. Uh, what do I get from this? Well, remember, what I'm searching for is a contradiction. I want to be able to get to some line that clearly cannot be true. How do I do that? Well, it has to be based on the properties of these numbers s and t that I introduced. Whatever s and t are, they have to be positive integers. That's the only things that I know about this. So let's see if I can do some work around here. And if you're at this point and you're like, uh, it's not clicking for me, I encourage you to just pause for a moment, stop the video, have a think about how you would go from here to prove something which clearly can't be true, and that leads to the contradiction, the negation must be false. If you had to think about it, or if you're like, no, I just, I'm ready to go, I want you to show me how to do this, here's how I'm going to go about it, right? I, I know S and T have to be whole numbers of some variety, but I know when I have a look at this equation that actually this equation implies some things about S and T that cannot possibly be true about whole numbers, about positive integers. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get my pronumerals S and T, I'm going to collect them on one side, so I've subtracted 4T from both sides. And then I'm going to get the constant terms over on the other side. So in this case, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. I then can just take out this factor of 4, which leaves me with this. And now here's the, here's the kicker. I'm now going to divide through and make a statement about s and t on their own. So I've got s take away t. This is the difference between s and t. It's equal to 2 divided by 4, which last I checked was a half. Now, s and t, remember, they can be any positive integer you like. But what I can tell you with great certainty is that if they are positive integers, there are no two positive integers that have a distance of a half between them, right? Like we know the positive integers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and so on. They're either, um, you know, zero distance apart or one apart or two apart. In other words, they are an integer distance apart. They can't possibly be half a unit apart. This is the contradiction that I was searching for. I can say contradiction, and the reason why is because uh, s and t are positive integers, so they, they can't possibly be half a unit apart. And this is what I wanted. I've got a contradiction of a right there. I can say, since the negation is false, that means because a negation 
always has the opposite truth value to the statement where it came from, the original statement, uh, I can say the original implication in this context, the original implication must be true. And that's the end of my proof by contradiction. So I hope that made sense to you. I know it's, it's quite weird to follow what's going on here. It's quite different in terms of the way you um, deduce and, and make progress through a proof like this. Um, but I would compare it to the very first time you learned how to deal with you know, trigonometric identities, right? You have a series of ideas and how to connect them logically together. When you began, they were quite unfamiliar and, and weird to play with. Um, but as you get a little more practice in and become more comfortable with these ideas and concepts, you'll see um, that the building blocks that we've seen of, of you know suggesting ideas being able to negate use contrapositives and that kind of thing um, they can actually be combined together in some really interesting ways that I hope will make sense to you um, and will enable you to prove the results that you're asked for